that initial setup, but it also kind of guides you to all the ongoing maintenance tools that you usually have to hunt and peck around IBM.com to find. Uh, diagnostic tools, configuration tools, uh, updates, all things of that sort. Uh, it's kind of a nice front end wizard if you've got junior admins or even non technical people who need to uh, install new servers. This makes it a little bit easier experience for them. And then, as I'm, I'm sure John Sheehy probably spoke to, IBM Systems Director, which is the premier of IBM Systems Management software, including with all IBM systems, supporting all IBM platforms, Power and, uh, and System X. A uh, common tool across the whole line, giving you a rich set of features. I won't go into all of them. Managing not just the hardware, taking advantage of uh, those hardware points of control I spoke to earlier, but also your virtualization, your energy management, uh, uh, basically a comprehensive tool for managing your data set. Here we look at the HS22 models, at least the initial GA models in detail. And then, like I said, kind of the sweet spot for the product line is really right here, the B3, uh, really B3U and B3 models will pretty much be the standard ones that we see most customers deploying with either the 5530 or 5540 uh, quad core processors. Uh, you'll note there are some dual core offerings, really just one dual core model. Uh, even though there are other dual core offerings in the 5500 series of processors. If you really need a dual core processor, be prepared to wait. IBM is pretty much, uh, Intel, excuse me, is pretty much not manufacturing those in great quantity anymore. Uh, they're pretty much being phased out. They, I doubt they'll be available past this year at all. Uh, quad core is pretty much the standard Intel processor offering now. So pretty much quad core is the standard that we recommend all customers adopt uh, at this point in time. Uh, if you need more of a low power efficiency offering, if, if you're looking to optimize that, there is the L2 model, L2U model there with the 5520. That's a good choice if you don't need maximum performance per core uh, and you're more concerned about energy efficiency, that's a good processor choice. That's the low voltage processor, so that would be a much more energy efficient option for replacing. Here's a look at the new I.O. connectivity for the HS22, and it's a little different than the previous models. There's now a new fourth factor that they call CIOV for the expansion cards that go into your blade. Think of these as your PCI cards that go into your traditional form factor servers. So these are your host bus adapters, Ethernet adapters for I.O. connectivity. Uh, connecting through those redundant paths that you see to the mid plane. This car basically has all the functionality and then it uses the built-in connections to the mid-plane dual redundant paths. And then you still have the CFFH form factor cards. These are the ones that connect in the blade center H to your high-speed switch module phase for your high-speed switch modules, uh, InfiniBand, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and probably other technologies to come down the road. Here you kind of look and see how it maps to the connectivity on the back of the blade center. And here you see the back of the blade center H. And on the back of the blade center H, uh, typical form factor is you have phase one and two are your ethernet. So each blade has integrated ethernet ports that connect to phase one and two. Ethernet switches in phase one and two. Three and four, usually over here, uh, can either be additional Ethernet or more typically we employ fiber channel for your SAN connectivity in base 3 and 4, usually redundant fiber channel switches. And then these larger floor factor are your high speed switch module slots. And so that's typically what you install in Finiband, 10 gigabit Ethernet. If you need more connectivity in terms of traditional or 8 gig fiber channel or 1 gig a bit Ethernet, can also make use of these MSIM multi-switch uh, interconnect modules. These can go into the high-speed phase and they give you options for additional regular speed or low speed uh, connectivity options if you need to scale beyond just you know, two ports per blade. Here you see some description of the common uh, I.O. options. So you have uh, 
Daughter card options from uh, QLogic for both fiber channel ether and Ethernet, uh, InfiniBand options, SAS uh, connectivity options really meant more for the Blade Center S that has internal SAS disk in the chassis, uh, Broadcom for 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, connectivity. There's some that internal RAID connectivity options that I, that I spoke to if you have an requirement there. Your memory DIN options up to 8 gig DIMs, again allowing you to scale up to 96 gigs of memory uh, with the 12 DIM slots and then the UHS-22. Internal hot swap disk drive options, both SAS and SATA, and then of course your processor options. Finally, HS-22 operating system support. Uh, the GA was about I believe March 30th, so end of last month. Uh, and we're pretty much, I think, already through P1 and P2 here. So at GA, you basically have your current versions of Linux and Windows pretty well supported. Uh, the one that's kind of lagging behind are some of your older uh, Linux releases, your Solaris and VMware. Uh, those are probably, at this point, about 30 days out uh, from being officially certified. And that's just you know going through the certification process with VMware probably already works, but in terms of VMware officially blessing it, that will probably be coming in the next 30 days or so. Any questions? All right. If there are any follow-up questions, uh, like we said, we'll be posting uh, all these materials on our website as well as videos of this presentation, as well as the one uh, we weren't able to uh, accomplish live this morning on VMware Virtual Desktop. So if you're interested in that topic, uh, look on our website, uh, etechservices.com slash presentations, I believe will be the official URL. We'll be emailing this out to everyone who attended. And uh, thank you very much. If there's anything you want to follow up with, some, with us on, on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, feel free to contact me, contact your local resources here in Tallahassee, Gar Schaefer, and Mark Baldino. And uh, again, we appreciate everyone taking their time today to spend some time with us learning about uh, um, the latest technologies uh, in, in IBM's offerings. Yeah, we're going to head over to the golf course a little bit if anybody would like to join us. Um, I know a few of the FST people that left will join us later for a little happy hour if you're interested. So, yeah. We are done, so uh, it's time for happy hour over at uh, the golf course, principally halls across the street at the Renegade Grill. Mark, so bye. anyone's so welcome to join us. <laughs> for Thanks, Javier. Social hour fun. Thank you. That's a lot easier, actually. All right.